What's up guys? So I'm bored and we're going to geek out on some plastic. We're going deep. We're going to take a look at everything. I've been thinking about it and I love posting in the bank videos but really all they are is just kind of like what I have set up at that time because the bottom line is part of what I've discovered about myself is that part of the fun that I get out of disc golf are the discs. Throwing the discs themselves. I'm sure most of you agree but what I mean is I like to switch my bag around because I like throwing a lot of different types of stuff and getting slightly different shots and feels. I love playing around with it and like trying to figure out which ones are my favorite. That is absolutely one of my favorite parts of this game. It's kind of like toy collecting, but you also get to use them to play a really uh, beautiful game that's very rewarding when you play it well. And uh, I just love it. So we're going deep. We're going to take a look at everything that I have <laughs> in my throwing stock right now. Just because I'm bored and let's do it. Let's take a look at some plastic. Um, this does kind of represent the bag that I'm working with right at this moment, but as we get into it, you'll see I have a bunch of other cool discs that maybe will get thrown in there. Now and again, who knows? I'm gonna try to trim this down. It's not gonna be like a full in the bag where I show every disc and talk about it, but you're gonna see them all. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to be quick about <laughs> most of them and just kind of show you what they are. Okay, let's move into it. Underside of the cart, I keep three overstable discs that I use um, for more for special occasions. I have a Deco Die Caltrop, beautiful short range tee shot disc. I have an anchor for some windy approaches. This kind of flies straight for me into the wind, as long as it's not super severe. So I love that disc. And then I have a Next Gen Gladiator. This I throw for headwinds or for big hyzers, but it's not something I throw a ton. So those live down here. Still putting with jawbreaker magnets. As we get into the actual kind of back stock over here, you'll see that I have others that I could um, switch into. I have a couple downstairs in my practice basket. I did not go get those to show you. Um, these are the ones I'm using, just purple, jawbreaker magnets, dead straight. Love them. Best putters I've ever had in the bag with those jawbreakers. Um, I'm really confident with them. I also have a soft magnet. You're going to see plenty more of these later as well. This is the one I'm carrying right now. It's a four chain. Uh, right around max weight, I believe. Just laser straight, hyzer flip um, to easy turns as well. Putter, uh, mostly off the tee and on approach, I'll throw that. Um, soft Caltrop, principal layup disc. If I'm just trying to put it close to the basket, this is what I reach for and it works awesome. It's super consistent, I know exactly what it's going to do. I am testing once again my old ESP Meteor. This is a 165 Meteor. I'll show you the ridiculous drawing I have on the back from my second ever ace back in 2010. Throwback right here. Um, it is Thursday too. Rooster Rock Hole 7. Uh, Rooster Rock East. I uh, Here's a little, just a little quick story. We were playing a, a special kind of uh, format where you throw two discs. It was me versus my buddy, just the two of us. You throw two drives off the tee, pick your best one, and then you play it as match play from there. You don't um, throw two from every uh, lie that you have throughout the hole just off the tee. But it's fun, so you get to throw extra shots and uh, it makes it a little bit more competitive when you aren't very good <laughs> like we were in 2010. Um, accidentally threw this one on a smooth hyzer into the chains for my first shot, then I'm like, oh, let me switch to a magnet. It's one of the ones you'll see later. And uh, hit the pole on the fly with my second shot. Uh, that would have been pretty sweet, but still a cool memory. Okay, gobies. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of these um, in just a minute, but the ones I have in my bag, this is the first one I ever got. It is somewhat understable to just laser beam straight. One of my favorite discs I've ever had, the Gobi, and that particular one's probably still my, my favorite. It's my, my OG, so i got to have the love for it. I have um, this one that I just put an orange dye on. This is my kind of beater that I'm carrying right now to just throw in whatever situation and not worry about it because I love that orange one. And I'm also quite attached to this smoke gray first run. This one's a little bit more stable. So I like having that red one just to kind of throw wherever and not worry about it so much. I have another backup for that. And then plenty more as well. Moving along. Compasses. The only compass left in my bag right now is this one that uh, my buddy Anthony got me. This is a Ricky two-time Gold X. So it's more stable. It's got a really just phenomenal feel. I love the feel of this thing. It's beautiful and it flies great. It's super consistent. I always know what it's going to do just straight to slightly uh, stable shots. This is not a flippy compass by any means. This run is nice, dead straight up to power and then will will fade out on you. But I mostly throw it for nice, smooth, um, 
hyzers because I need a dead straight shot and going goby. I'm also carrying a Justice. This one's actually in, in the main bag rather than down below because I've been finding myself um, reaching for it somewhat often to get out of trouble and just kind of throw extra fun shots uh, out there on the course. DGPT stamp, uh, shout out to Steve Dodge. He actually sent me this for some reviews that never happened. But <laughs> here's the disc. I did some other reviews for them. He uh, told me to keep that one, and it's in the bag. And uh, yeah, definitely a good disc. Extremely overstable. That hybrid um, DGPT hybrid Justice is crazy overstable. Drivers, two Furies. This one is my Ace Fury. I throw this thing and I'm looking for it to move right all the time. I basically don't throw it for anything that I don't want to go right. A roller, or I will throw it down on a hyzer, rip it really hard on a hyzer, and it will turn up and completely flip over all the way um, and go super far when that happens. But a lot of times I'm throwing this for really sharp turnovers, um, kind of mimicking the forehand that I don't have. This is an Opto Fury. This one is an older run, kind of similar uh, time frame to the pre-Sweden. Uh, trespasses that I like. It has the laser printed weight on the bottom right there. This one is super straight. So I'll throw this one more for hyzer flips to straight, but I could basically use it as a backup for my pink one as well. Just got to give it a little bit more power. Thrashers. I'm going to see a whole lot of these, but I have this Barbarian Stronghold one that uh, Tyler sent me. This one flies really good. It's just a nice solid workhorse one that I can throw, um, and I dig it. Definitely, definitely a good flyer. This one's probably my favorite one out of all of them, to be honest, at this point. It is really pearly, very grippy, almost kind of more Z-Flex in terms of the flexibility and the grip on this disc. But it just feels tremendous. It bombs. It's, uh, let's see, I don't even know the weight on it. I think it's 165 or so in the 160s. This one crushes. It's got a little dome on it. And uh, this is what I'm going for most of the time. And then this one is another one I'm carrying right now. It is a TI. I like the TI one quite a bit. This one is just one I'm throwing and enjoying. It's not super different. I'll have to fill you in as I get more familiar with them. This ESP. This one's super flippy. 165. Crazy understable, but it rolls for days. It's super easy to get it down on a roller. Heiser flipped big turnovers. Downhill distance, uphill distance, it's just a great flippy disc that's super, super fun to throw. Um, it's kind of touch and go sometimes, I'm not sure where exactly it's going to go, but it's just a fun disc to throw and I, I just enjoy that one. And then I also have um, a Big Z. This one is a huge bomber as well, somewhat in between the ESP and my, and my regular Zs. It's definitely more on the flippy side, but it's really solid. Finally. We have an Escape. I've been throwing this one a lot lately. This is just a really nice straight flying disc. Um, I can kind of throw it on similar lines as my Thrashers. It goes almost as far, if not farther, given the right conditions, because the, the Escape is just so glidey and just keeps holding that line for days. I love it. Um, but I'm using this one more for fairway kind of distances and just really, really, really accurate. Um, shot shaping. It can hold a lot of different angles really well and I uh, can really manipulate it in a lot of different ways. So I'm enjoying that disc quite a bit. Throwing out a bunch. Alright, that's it for the bag proper. Now we're digging deep. Now we're going to go into the actual throwing stock that I hold on to. Okay, as we dig into this crate we're going to see more of my backups and also discs that could just end up in the bag for any number of reasons. I may have a different type of uh, course condition or I might be playing a, a different type of course. Like if I'm playing a short technical course, I'm definitely going to be carrying more putters to throw off the tee. I may throw an extra mid-range in there, that sort of thing. If I'm going out to play Milo, I may carry more drivers because a lot of those tee shots are drivers for me. Basically, 90% of them off the top of my head, you know, except for the few kind of shorter technical ones. I'm throwing driver on all that, so I may end up with more drivers in my bag, obviously. But, yeah, I kind of take it to the extreme over a lot of different players, and some players will just carry one bag set up, that's it. No matter where they go, Andy's like that. No matter where he goes, he carries the exact same bag set up. My buddy Anthony is somewhere in between. He likes to switch it up quite a bit, but he switches out molds much more than I do. I kind of tend to throw the same molds. Yeah, I just end up switching out the individuals quite a bit for fun mostly and also to suit a variety of different course conditions. Okay, let's talk about backups. If you purchase a disc and you know that that online retailer or a local shop happens to have the same color and weights of that disc, more of them in stock, like if you 
you uh, go pick up a Fury off the shelf, and when you buy this one, you see there's two or three other ones sitting there on the shelf, same color, same weight. Once you get out there and you determine that you like this disc and it's something you want to put in your bag and you're enjoying it, I highly recommend going back and picking up those other ones if you can. That's why I have this. I tested the one that's in my bag I showed you earlier. This is the exact same one that I happened to notice was on the shelf that day. I went back and bought it. I have never thrown it. It lives in my, in my uh, backup stock here. And if I need it, basically as good of a replacement as you could possibly get. So, next, I have a basic um, backup escape. That's a nice flyer for sure. I have a pre-Sweden escape. This is a backup that I'm kind of holding on to in case I ever want to test it again. Also, I may want to use this um, if I ever lose my a uh, little bit more stable Fury, because this one's a pretty understable escape for sure. Then, have a whole bunch of thrashers. Let's take them all out at once. Well, not that many. I have quite a few in my bag, I guess, and I have more on the way. I actually have one coming that I probably should have waited to film this until I got my mail later, but whatever. This is a backup Big Z Thrasher for the one in my bag. Again, same exact thing. I knew this was at the Disc Golf Depot, and I had the same um, color, stamp, and weight as the other one that I really like. So, there it is. Now I have it if I need it. This one, uh, Andy got me. It is a Glow Thrasher. Definitely a solid disc for sure. Um, it is, um, yeah, really nice. Kind of like a backup. I would throw this in the bag probably if I lost that pearly one. Very similar in flight to that. Then I have the first run thrasher. This is the max weight first run. Solid flyer. A little bit more overstable. I carry that one occasionally. I have another Barbarian Stronghold one. This one would go in if I lost the one with the green stamp. They fly very similar. I just like the green one just a hair more. So this one's just a nice backup again. And then I have a little bit pop top. Big Z. Now this is one that, again, I know I have this. I haven't thrown it in a while. I should take it out and see how it flies again and see if uh, maybe it's a little bit more stable thrasher that I've been looking for. Because you never know. It's kind of funny when you hold on to discs and they, you don't throw them. It kind of, uh, yeah, you lose out on some of the fun. Really is what it boils down to. Um, okay. Other backups. I have uh, some trespasses in here as well. Did I not show you my trespass in the bag? That's weird. Um, you guys have seen my black and white trespass, or my black and yellow trespass in my bag forever. This one right here, just a nice old pre-Sweden I've had in my bag for a long time. Um, and I have some backups as well. I'm not throwing it very much, and it's in danger of coming out, but I have the room, so I kind of just leave it in there if I, ever, if I ever feel like it. But I've been looking for a more overstable thrasher to kind of bump the trespass out of my bag, just to kind of simplify things a little bit more. I have an air one that I'm holding on to. It's a really far-flying disc, fun to throw. You never know, I guess. Might want to carry that at some point. I have a sweet Cobra die. Um, this is the one that's most likely to go into my bag had I, if I were to lose the black and yellow. Then I have this super rad max weight um, grass green one. This one's epic. It's a beautiful disc. I, I really like this one. I hold on to this one almost as a collector, although it's definitely a thrower and it flies phenomenal. So it's a great disc. And then I have another kind of somewhat backup, um, direct backup from my yellow with the black um, dye on it. There's that. And then finally in here in terms of drivers, I think, is a pop top recycled gladiator that I would throw in there if I lost my next gen. But I'll probably end up trying to get a couple more of those next gen ones. They shouldn't be hard to find. And uh, I like those ones. The, I like the deco die. I like the flat top. They're, uh, they're solid. All right. Mid ranges. I have some compasses in here. I have a retro. Not even really sure. I just kind of hold on to that one. I may throw it at some point, but probably not. Be a good disc to give to a beginner or something, too, I guess. I have a signed uh, pre world champ Ricky that is uh, definitely a nice straight flyer that I bagged for a while, but since Rick signed it, I kind of keep it on the side, I guess, but it's definitely a thrower. Could find its way out in the course at any time. This one's really nice. This is probably the one that would go in if I lost the uh, Gold X. This is just a straight up gold line, but it's really flat top. It's a little lighter weight, at like 172. I love the Zelda die, and it actually flies and feels relatively similar. So that might, that would probably be what happened there. I have hold on to a Moonshine, mostly if I were to ever actually play Glow, which I never really do. Um, I have that. Then these I just can't get rid of. They're just too cool. I have this Sparkle Opto. Um, celebration Rick stamp and then I have this double stamp silver one that I bagged for a while this one's epic as well both of those are really really pretty and uh, 
are nice stable to overstable compasses. And this is the one that I carry for a long time um, that I kind of just took out of the bag because I've been using the Gobies in the same kind of turnover shots instead. I just, I just don't necessarily need it. This is a nice old broken in pre uh, World Champ Ricky compass. Okay. We're rounding it out here. We got a couple more mid ranges and then some putters. Let's get into it. Oh my God, this is crazy. Don't come crying to me if you guys sit here and watch this whole video either. You know what you were doing, getting into. You guys clicked on my channel. You know I'm the, the ultra the ultra geek. Geeking out on plastic. All right. I have a completely blank Deco die anchor. Good disc, it's just not quite as overstable as my Opto, so I switched back to the Opto. This one's nice though. Good flyer. And then this one is a DGN anchor that I hold on to as a backup as well. Have never thrown that, I don't believe. Then we get into my backup gobies. I have one that lives on my wall or by my computer that could could be thrown if needed, but it's just kind of being held on to at this point. I have six more in here, other than the three in my bag plus the one on the wall. Um, and I will probably end up getting more. I'm going to tell you guys right now. Um, this one, beautiful yellow one I got at Sportsman's Warehouse with a gift card. I went there with a gift card and I looked through the stock and they had a Gobi in there. I was like, you know I'm getting this. <laughs> There's no way I'm not leaving the store without that. This one is another backup for my orange one. Very similar. Um, just a lightly thrown orange one. That's a good disc. Beautiful first run, green. This one would probably go in if I lost the uh, smoke one. In my bag, here's the other red one that I have with the orange rim. And then I just got these two beauties from DD the other day. It was weird. I ordered some misprints. They didn't have the misprints. And then we figured out a couple days later, they sent me these two just regular Gobies. Beautiful discs. Love these. Purple with like a kind of um, silver blue stamp. <laughs> these are just, oh my god. I love that disc so much. They're just so awesome. I want them all. Send me all of your gobies. Okay. Rounding it out. Putters. What have I got in here? Got two Caltrops. This is my ace one. It's an opto. I like this one. It could bump the uh, deco die out of the bag, but I really like that deco die plastic and the way it looks. This one's great, though. It's a great thrower, overstable putter. Love that thing. And then I have a Mega Soft as well. I will occasionally carry this because it's really overstable. It's a little bit more overstable than my Soft, and it's fresher, too. Um, but it's just, it just dumps out and just sits. It doesn't go anywhere. This thing is super floppy, as you can see. So if I had to play somewhere where it had uh, a lot of, like, kind of roll-away dangers and stuff like that, this would be a disc I would very much consider throwing in the bag. Or if I lost my soft, I'd probably just end up bagging this and see if I can make it work. I'm sure it would probably be fine. Then, magnets are all that's left. I have quite a few of those as well. Bunch of orange softies and some jawbreakers. Got one more purple backup, brand new. Um, so I can throw that in there when I need it. Then I have these two kind of fleshy ones, fleshy orange. This one I carry for a while. It's a little beat and it's lighter weight. It's a great, uh, just straight putter. I could definitely throw this one in the bag as well. It's a little, a uh, little bit more understable. This is a backup for that one. So I got, I got the uh, jawbreakers covered for quite a while, and I've gotten a good few years out of the one that I've been putting with as my main putter as well. And then I got a stack of just super trash, <laughs> beat up orange softies. Look at that. That's beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. Okay. Oh my god. This is the most ridiculous video of all time. I love it. <laughs> look, look at this one. This one is just destroyed. Oh my god. I can't believe I'm showing you guys this. I bagged this thing for a long time. It's it's unbelievably flippy and really fun to throw, um, but it works. It works. I can throw this in the bag at any time, and I know I can throw functional shots with it, as mangled and ridiculous <laughs> as this thing is. Oh, sorry. And then it has this really nice thumb track right there. Oh, just beautiful thing. Okay, moving on. Then we have, this is my favorite disc of all time. This is one that has been in more of my videos than any other disc. This is my old 165 gram, straight up orange softy, black stamp. And this is, this is my baby. I would, I would cry if I lost this disc, so she stays at home to be safe, but still flies every bit as wonderful as, uh, as she ever did. This one I just got in the mail the other day. Um, I traded a Super Soft Warden for it. And be like, who would trade a, a basically brand new Super Soft Warden for this destroyed 
orange soft magnet other than me. I love it. I'm happy to have it in my stock in case I ever need to call upon it for, for duty, for active duty. Then I have two rainbow stamps. I have a four chain that is older, obviously, and beautiful. And then this one is very likely to go in my bag for any shorter technical courses so that I have two including that yellow 4chan. That's it, guys. We made it. We survived a look at all of my plastic. Thanks for sticking in. If you actually made it this far, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers.